let's just say that Lydia stayed with that business and she traveled around with this new understanding and this relationship of, with Christ that was real through her business, I believe she quite possibly changed the world. Now that's a lot that's not there in Scripture, but I think it's a, it's a pretty good idea of what very well could have happened. Now here's the point, guys, right here. Look at your notes, write this in. Our walk with Christ does not cause away from our work, from our families, from our situations, from our dreams, from our desires. It doesn't call us away from those things. It directs us in how we do them. Now let's go back to our scripture in Colossians. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Imagine if you had that attitude of Lydia. I'm going to take Christ with me. And he's going to direct me in everything I do. No matter how small or big or important I think it is. When I go to my job in the morning, God, I'm going to take you with me. I'm going to glorify you with that job. God, whenever I'm dealing with my family and I'm talking to them, I'm going to glorify you as I speak and as I talk, and as I'm a husband, as I'm a wife, or a dad, or a mom. Glorify him in everything. And then this is what you experience right here, Matthew 5.14. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand. It gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works, your good deeds, and praise your Father in heaven. Think of it. If we were to get a hold of that and take him into everything we do, we would change the world. We would be like Lydia. Imagine this, you can glorify God as a, as a manager. You can glorify God as an engineer or a city planner. A graphics designer, you can glorify God. As a salesperson, as a real estate appraiser, as a substitute teacher, as a restaurant host or hostess, as a homemaker, as a karate instructor, selling automobiles, as an IT manager, as a student, as a carpenter, you can glorify God. Working in telecommunication, you can glorify God. As a financial planner, as a private school teacher, working for the federal government, you can glorify God. As a sound engineer, working in a juvenile detention center, you can bring God with you, you can glorify God. Working in admissions for a university, working in a newspaper or a bank, or as a custodian, or as a professional musician, as a mortgage broker, as a real estate agent, working in advertising and marketing, working in printing and construction, in the postal service, as a prosecutor, as a lawyer, as a speech pathologist, as a bricklayer, as a systems design and management person, you can glorify God. As a clothing store owner, you can glorify God. As a restaurant owner, working in mulch sales, you can glorify God. Installing satellite televisions, you can glorify God. As an insurance agent, Selling home security systems, you can glorify God. As an ice cream delivery person, you can glorify God. As a physical therapist, as an RN, as a doctor, as a fireman, you can take him with you and you can glorify him. Lydia had something going on that changed the world. I want to tell you something that some of you need to start doing immediately is when you wake up in the morning, before you go, you need to have a very simple prayer with the Lord that needs to go like this. It needs to go like this. God, with everything I do and say, I want to glorify you this day. Show me what you want me to do. With that simple prayer, you're going to start to see him do some things that will freak you out. And I can, I can, I can speak to that from experience. Two weeks ago, I was driving, and I prayed a little prayer like that. I said, and, and I heard something on the radio that really disturbed me, and it had to do with, with uh, something in politics. And, and, it, and it bothered me because I'm like, man, this is not right. And I honestly began to pray, and I felt helpless because I don't know anybody personally that is really involved in politics. 
And, and I mean, I can vote, I know that, and I can pray. But I was feeling a little bit helpless, and I was just praying, I'm like, God, I, I don't know, what, what do I do with something like that? I mean, that's, that's got to change. And I prayed a simple prayer to God. Later that day, I was at a coffee shop, and I was sitting there, and this man came up to me, he was wearing a, wearing a suit. He comes up, and he's like, hey, what, what do you do for a living? <laughs> I go, well, I'm a pastor. And he goes, I thought you were. He goes, well, I'm a Christian. And we begin to talk, and I go, well, what do you do? He goes, well, I'm a, I'm a lobbyist for the state of Missouri. <laughs> I, was, I was like, are you serious? I mean, it freaked me out, and I'm like, oh, God, pray. I don't know anybody. Well, now I know somebody. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not kidding you. It was amazing. And I begin to open, he began to open up, and he goes, man, it is really hard to be a Christian in my job. And I go, don't stop. Man, I will pray for you. And I mean, we exchange phone numbers and let's go out to lunch sometime. I mean, God will answer those kind of prayers. I want to tell you in closing about a guy that you might have heard about or might not have heard about. Uh, his name is William Wilberforce. And he was born in 1759. If you're not good at math, that means you didn't, you didn't know him personally. Okay? That was a long time ago. <laughs> Okay, he died in 1833. Unless we got some really old folks around here. I don't think we do. Okay, William Wilberforce was a British politician. He was a member of parliament uh, of the Tory party. And he was a very close friend of a prime minister at that time by the name of William Pitt, who you might have heard of. In 1785, William Wilberforce uh, had a conversion experience that changed his life. He became a Christian. He became an evangelical believer. Which evangelical, what that means is, is you want to tell me about God. Okay? You want to tell me about Christ. That's what that means. And so he was a politician, he became a Christian, and he was struggling because he thought, I think I'm going to leave that life behind because I just want to go after God. And I don't know if he wanted to be a monk or, or something like that, or, or I'm not really sure, but he was just enjoying so much his walk with the Lord. He wanted to leave the whole world behind. And, and believe me, there are days when I'm there, <laughs> you know, and we're there. Just leave the stuff behind and just, God, I just want to run out and feel just, ah, uh, you know. That's where he was at. Well, he had some people that were abolitionists that came to him. There was a really bad thing going on back then called slavery. And in, in England, they had these ships that would, would bring slaves from Africa, and they would take them to, um, to the sugar fields. Uh, put 600 people on board a ship that could maybe hold a couple hundred people. And half of them would die by the time they got there. And it was an awful, awful humanitarian crisis that was happening. And there was a group of abolitionists that were trying to get that ended. That came to him. And he was, they knew that he was against that. And they came to him and they had a conversation with him. And, and, and there was actually a movie about this guy about a year ago called Amazing Grace. You may have seen it. If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. But what I want to do is I want to show you this very short clip from that movie. Because it, it just, it hits nail right on the head. So if you could just show that real quick. When you reach the plantation, they put irons to the fire and do this to let you know that you no longer belong to God but to a man. Mr. Wilberforce, we understand you're having problems choosing whether to do the work of God or the work of a political activist. We humbly suggest that you can do both. Okay, if you catch what she said, we're having a hard time, you, we understand you're having a hard time deciding if you want to go into the ministry or you want to be a political activist. And the lady says, we suggest you what does that mean? That means you can glorify God right where you're at. And he did. He stayed in politics. In, in the year 1807, he worked and worked and worked. And he saw um, the Slave Trade Act of 1807, which, which basically ended that slave trade. He stayed in. He did the work of the Lord right where he was at. And so here we go. Colossians 3.17. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it. Could you guys close your eyes, please?